Hi, I'm Christian Sager from How Stuff Works, and we are at DragonCon today, and we're lucky enough to talk to Annalene Newitz, who's the editor-in-chief at io9, and you've written a book yep. called Scatter, Adapt, Remember, How Humans Will Survive a Mass Extinction. So basically, from reading this book, I get that the history of Earth is filled with the death of species over and over again, and we're kind of wondering, are humans any different, right? And even though an extinction event probably won't happen in our lifetimes, it might be happening right now as we're living. And are we prepared to survive it? That's sort of the thesis of your book? That's right. So today I wanted to talk to you mainly about all these previous mass extinctions that our planet has gone through already. Let's first start off by defining what what is a mass extinction? Because I know you talk to a lot of different scientists and geologists for your book, right? So what did you gather from all of them for what mass extinction is? Mass extinction is a period of time that can last for about a million to two million years. So they take a long time. And over that period of time, 75% or more of all species on the planet die out. And it sounds, like I said, slow. It sounds like it's not a big deal. But that's actually a tremendous number of species dying out. It's basically, when you come out the other side of a mass extinction, you have a whole new world. It's less than 2 million years? That's right. OK. So that's important to keep in mind, 75% in less than 2 million years. They're mostly external situations, right? Yeah, basically, if you look at the mass extinctions that have happened uh, over the past basically half billion years, we've had five of them already. And they've all been caused in some way by a natural disaster. You've kind of given us the broad spectrum of it. Let's break them down individually. So the first one, if, if I'm correct, correct me if I'm wrong here, is the Ordovician period. That's I'm gonna right. butcher these names. The first mass extinction happens about 450 million years ago. So take okay. yourself back in time. Yeah. And the, this happens at the end of the Ordovician period, which if you want to think about this in the context of what we know about geology, uh, the Cambrian period comes right before the Ordovician. And the Cambrian period is when you have that thing called the Cambrian explosion. And that's when multicellular okay. life evolves. So this is shortly after multicellular life evolves. And by shortly, I mean millions of years, because it's the Earth. <laughs> yeah. So things Just are taking a long time. Keep it in perspective. Time. Yeah, Earth is 4.5 <laughs> billion years old. So keep it in perspective, indeed. So during this period, we don't really know what happened. What we know for sure is that there were two ice ages that happened very quickly. And one theory, which I personally find uh, very compelling, is that uh, we were bombarded by cosmic radiation. It might have been from a nearby supernova. It might have been from some other massive explosion in space. And what would happen if that occurred, uh, some physicists believe, and again, this is highly contested, as the rays hit the upper atmosphere, it would cause a cloud layer to form that would blanket the planet in either darkness or twilight that would lower the temperatures very quickly. And what happened at that time was most creatures all creatures pretty much lived in the ocean. So when you get glaciation, that pulls water out of the ocean and that turns all of your coastal habitats into a desert, basically. So bye-bye. Okay. So and to oceans. clarify too, like by cosmic rays, this isn't like the cosmic rays that hit the Fantastic Four, right? Like this is like <laughs> the kind of stuff that like if it if it strikes human beings, it can damage our DNA, it could potentially cause, cause cancer. cancer. That's and right. so the theory behind this uh, first mass extinction is basically that those cosmic rays altered the atmosphere itself. That's right, exactly. Okay. And then that altered the climate. And then the second one is during the Devonian period? The end of the Devonian period. OK. And it's largely caused by invasive species. Can you explain that? So basically what's happening is, so the Devonian period, its nickname is the Age of Fishes. So we've got lots of creatures living in the ocean. We have some plant life on land. And what's going on is a lot of um, earthquakes and volcanoes are happening. And one theory is that as a result of this, you're seeing a lot of the habitats where these fishes are living running into each other. So you have to imagine this is a world where a lot of the land masses are pushed together. And most of these fishes are living in inland seas, which we don't even have inland seas anymore. These are mm. basically vast 
oceans. Um, if you live in the United States, the Great Basin was created by one of these inland seas. That's why the soil there is so rich and full of fossils. Okay. So basically, um, as you see these uh, earthquakes and volcanoes happening, these inland seas, which have very particular ecosystems, they meet, uh, the waters run into each other, and so the more successful predators, the more successful animals start taking over the habitats of the more specialist animals that can only survive in one place. And so basically it's a kind of Starbucksization of the inland seas. You know, suddenly you got the same shark in every sea eating all of these creatures, and so you don't see what you see in the Devonian is interesting because it's not die-outs of species, it's that new species don't evolve. For right. several million years, it's called a depression in speciation. And so it's really, it's one of the weirdest and most interesting mass extinctions, and that's how invasive species destroy an ecosystem. Right, and that could very easily happen in our present condition it's too. Right Maybe now. right. It's happening right. right now. And in fact, the uh, geologist who I interviewed about this theory said, yep, it's happening right outside my door. That's cheery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk to, speaking of cheery, let's talk about the most popularly named mass extinction, which is the Great Dying. I love it. It's like a metal band. Or <laughs> yeah, something or like Sweden. a Doctor Who episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, talk about the Great Dying. So the Great Dying is everyone's favorite mass extinction because it's the biggest. Um, it happened about 250 million years ago. 95% of all species on the planet died out. So this is a period when we had land animals, we had lots of animals in the ocean, we had plants, insects, all of them are hit. It's very rare to see that, very rare to see insects hit by a mass extinction. Yeah. And what happened was, basically, all of the land masses on the planet were in one giant continent, Pangaea. And at the very northernmost tip of that continent, in what's now Siberia, a volcano starts going off. It's one of those kind of volcanoes where a big crack opens in the earth and a ton of gases are coming out, a ton of lava is coming out. By the end, the amount of lava that's come out would cover northern Europe. So this and is what we call a mega volcano, This right? is, by any definition, a mega volcano. Okay. Um, nobody would dispute whether, that, uh, where, whether it achieved that level of magnificence. And it's basically, belching out toxic gases, it's belching out carbon. So it's wow. a thousand years of vomiting up gunk into the atmosphere. And the result is exactly what we're seeing on the planet today from industrial pollution, from emitting all this carbon. You see acidification of the oceans and anoxic zones in the oceans where fish are dying. You see um, heavy pollution in the environment. You see global warming and you just see massive die-offs. And at the end of this period, one geologist I spoke to said he likes to call the end of that era slime world because the main creatures that survive are slimes living off the bodies of the dead and yeah. basically, you know, able to to make it in this I kind of harsh environment. I remember reading that part in your book and it was like largely hypothesized that it's black slime, right? So I mean, it's very science fiction when you think about it, right? That it's like, it's got this kind of x files -y thing to it that yeah. life is essentially just black slime it's all over the planet. converted into slime. Because of this, yeah. Yeah, and actually like a lot of the other animals that survived were sort of crocodilian. So you have to uh -huh. imagine these crocodiles eating each other in slime world. and. That was what the Earth was for millions of years after this mass it's extinction. It's pretty brutal. That definitely is worth the title of The Great Dying. <laughs> yeah, you would not have wanted to be there. Okay, so we're closing in towards the end. We're at number four, yes. which would be Triassic period. So the Triassic period comes right after uh, the Permian period. And during the Triassic, you see these little dog-sized creatures that later become the dinosaurs. So you mm -hmm. just see the early evolution of the dinosaurs. And then toward the end of the Triassic period, a volcano goes off between two continents that are now separated by the Atlantic Ocean. Right. And that volcano, it's an undersea volcano that pushes those continents apart. So when you want to think about how big this volcano was, imagine that the Atlantic Ocean used to be basically a river. Mm. And the amount of the way it was pushed apart was all from lava pushing those two continents apart. So again, it's releasing a lot of gas, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a little industrial revolution happening down there, and that's causing um, climate change and the heating causes a lot of wildfires on the, on the continents. And so we get another really big extinction event. And then we come to the one that most people know, which is the dinosaurs and the hypothesis that a meteorite impact is what led to their extinction. And I think a lot of people are fairly familiar with that. 
but I'd like to talk to you about, because in your book you talk about that there's controversy behind that actually, especially in the scientific community. And one of the theories is that it was also mega volcanoes that might have led to the extinction of the dinosaurs. Uh, it's important to say that nobody's questioning whether the uh, there was some kind of massive yeah. impact. Um, nobody's saying that that didn't happen. We have happen. the evidence. We have clear evidence that there was a massive impact um, in Baja California area. And uh, we have evidence from all ac across the planet that this impact projected all kinds of burning rock like all across the whole world. So we know that that was a big deal. But also at the same time, shortly before this um, bolide hits the planet, we have huge volcanoes going off in India um, in an area that's now called the Deccan Flats. And these volcanoes were pretty far inland, but they released so much lava that it actually reached the ocean. And similar to that Permian volcano, this also, this volcanic activity may have continued for centuries. And so that may have started a process of dying, especially in the oceans, that then when we get this meteor hitting us yeah. just finishes it off. So it could have been a, yeah, a combo effect. I think what's important to understand is that when you have the dinosaurs uh, begin to die out, um, it's not just because like flaming death from the sky. Yeah, it's not right. just flaming death from the earth. It's a slow process of climate change. Mm -hmm. Both of these events, these horrific natural disasters, they sure, they kill a bunch of, of creatures right where they hit, but then over time, what they're doing is tampering with the temperatures on the planet. And that makes it hard for plants to grow. Mm, that makes right. it hard for guys who eat the plants, which makes it hard for the guys who eat the guys that eat the plants. And so you get really, in the end, mass starvation. And mm -hmm. that's the kind of sad, pathetic part of these mass extinctions is that they sound really awesome with all the fire, but they all end with people or animals being really hungry and dying. Which leads us to the, the, the hypothesis that we're currently living in a sixth extinction event, right? That's right. So the question is, is what what is it? What are the combination of events that we're dealing with? So there are a lot of theories about what might be the beginning of this uh, sixth extinction event. And I think the most plausible is that it may have started with the dying out of mammoths and other megafauna. So in the Americas, um, there were uh, a lot more kinds of life um, here, uh, large mammals, uh, large land mammals and ocean mammals as well, although most of those survived. And when humans came to the Americas, those large animals died out. Lots of theories about how that happened. The easiest way to sum it up is we took their habitat Sure. Uh, they couldn't live here with us here. We were so, eating the same invasive food. species again. We are an invasive species. Yeah. Humans are an incredibly successful invasive species. And so we had a role in killing off these megafauna. We also killed off megafauna in Australia as well. So this is the beginning, say about 15,000 years ago, um, of a series of extinctions that we see um, leading to very elevated levels of extinctions among land animals. And um, it's difficult to say what those levels are because of course we've only been gathering data for a couple of centuries that's really, um, that's really data we can rely on. And, um, and a lot of the data that's older is very focused on things like birds. People were counting bird species 200 years ago. But when <laughs> scientists look back at um, the history of mass extinctions, the way that you know that a mass extinction is happening is you see a spike in the levels of, of extinctions. There's always extinctions happening, it's natural. That's called the background extinction rate. So you're always, if you're having a good ecosystem, some creatures are going extinct, right. some new creatures are evolving to replace them. But that's not necessarily a mass extinction. That it's is just not extinction a mass extinction happening in the background. That is just normal. Yep. That's just, just the way among people, there's always people dying and there's always people being mm -hmm. born and you're not going to be surprised to see a death rate. Right. If you suddenly saw a huge number of people dying, much more than you would expect, then you might say, huh, are we having a pandemic? Are we ha is there right. something yeah. wrong? Yeah. And that's what a mass extinction is, is when you see that spike in numbers. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing right now, if we look back over our data, is that there are far more land animals going extinct than we would expect based okay. on the background levels of extinction that, that we know from previous, from looking at the fossil record. We look at the fossil record and we say, 
you know, during this, during the Cretaceous, when the dinosaurs were all happy and zooming around, right. like these are the, this is the amount of extinction we see. Right now, among uh, creatures on land um, in the Holocene, which is our current period, um, you know, we're seeing something that's, that's a lot, a uh, lot higher than that. But the question is, is this normal? Is this normal variation? We can't say for sure, but we can say at the same time that we're seeing this elevated level of, ex of extinction, we're also seeing carbon loading in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. We're also seeing ocean acidification, two things that we saw in almost every other mass extinction. Right, just so, caused by other events. Caused by other events, caused by natural disasters, rather than things like industrial production, mm -hmm. rather than things like industrial farming practices. Right. Um, agriculture is a huge reason why we're seeing ocean acidification. And, um, and so partly through human intervention or perhaps largely through human intervention, we may be setting off inadvertently another mass extinction. Yeah. And, um, and so that's the big question right now. We do have a lot of evidence that it's happening, but because these things take hundreds of thousands of years. That's a long longitudinal study. It's hard, <laughs> Longer yeah. Longer than any of our lifetimes. It's hard to, to know how to interpret it. So the other half of your book, though, is fairly positive in that you, doing this research, found that y you, know, you think that human beings have it in us to hopefully survive another mass extinction. And I want people to go out and buy your book, so I'm not going to reveal how, but Basically, you, there's sort of two things you think that we should do that'll get us there, which is improving city life, and then the, the second one would be a long-term plan to get off the planet Earth. That's right, um, and I think, you know, realistically, what we need to be focusing on is really, you know, a lot of the things that environmental scientists are already saying. Leading a more sustainable life, um, mm -hmm. having a more sustainable relationship with natural resources and food resources, and that's where cities come in because yeah. most people at this point live in cities. We need to be rethinking how we're fueling cities, how we're feeding cities, and how we can make it so that those things are not um, contributing to this carbon loading, to this ocean acidification, which will cause a mass extinction. I mean, the thing, is people keep saying my book is optimistic, but I am saying unequivocally, there's going to be a mass extinction. Mm -hmm. We might cause it, uh, it might be this one that's happening right now, but if we don't, if we get our act together and we start having a balanced energy breakfast and we, we stop polluting, even if we do that, we could still get hit by a flaming ball from space. Mm -hmm. There could still be a mega volcano. So we have to be prepared. Yeah. First, we have to clean up our own act, but then we have to think in the long term about the fact that living on a giant rock made mostly of like fire with a thin crust on top, yeah. not the safest lifestyle. Yeah, so yeah. in the long term, over the next thousand years, maybe we should be thinking about living in places that are safer. But I think, you know, going to space is awesome, but that's really the long-term goal. The short-term goal is living on Earth in a way that will not Making kill us all. Habitable. Yeah. Right. Okay, thank you very much for sitting down with us today. I know that you've got a busy convention schedule and uh, I really appreciate that you took the time yeah, to talk to us about me. this book. Please go out and get this book and learn more about extinction events and how we might survive them. So where can they get your book? They can get my book anywhere where books are sold. It's called Scatter, Adapt, and Remember, How Humans Will Survive a Mass Extinction. And you can also reach me on Twitter. I'm Anna Lee N. So if you want to see more content like this, where we're interviewing smart people and talking about all the different ways that we can die, <laughs> please subscribe to our channel. Hey, and also, why don't you let us know in the comments what you think about how you would survive a mass extinction. And don't forget to visit us at HowStuffWorks.com. Most people want the human species to continue forever, right? I mean, that's not a crazy assumption. So what if I were to tell you that we, the human species, are facing a mass extinction right now? All it takes is 75% or more of Earth's species to go extinct in less than two million years. And while that might seem like a long, long time, looking at the big picture gives us several signs that we are living in a modern mass extinction.